the guy from Pittsburgh. Well, first of all, I want to thank Tracy3006 for sending me a message. Thanks for posting this, that Donald Trump saw the Muslims celebrating in, in New Jersey. It saved me from looking it up myself. You're the man. I link this on Breitbart and hope you get a lot of views. All the best. So thank you. And then Omega Kent, who wasn't as nice, he says, George Senda, now go find a story where thousands were celebrating in New Jersey. Well, apparently, Omega Kent, you didn't pay attention. I found it. It was in the Washington Post, September 18, 2001. But we have other stories to corroborate this to an extent. There is a story on BizPack Review, BPR, entitled, I live in Jersey and Trump is my right. Muslims did celebrate on 9-11 in New Jersey. We saw it. November 23rd, 2015, by Carmine Sabia, with 409 comments. Now, it did happen, I saw it. Donald Trump is telling the truth about Muslim celebrating in New Jersey on September 11, 2001. I drove with family members to Patterson, New Jersey that morning after the planes hit. It's not the kind of thing you forget. We witnessed people in traditional Muslim guard dancing, jumping, shouting, and celebrating like their team had won their Super Bowl, just as Trump said. I quote, I watched when the World Trade Center came tumbling down, Trump said Saturday, quote, end quote, and I watched in New Jersey, New Jersey, in Jersey City, New Jersey, where thousands, excuse me, and thousands of people were cheering as that building was coming down. Thousands of people were cheering. Trump has refused to back off those comments. He told George Stephanopoulos Sunday it did happen, I saw it. Media outlets and politicians have been quick to call him a liar, but the fact it happened just as he said. I didn't see thousands of Muslims celebrating, but actually saw a pop, absolutely saw a pocket, perhaps a hundred jumping for joy at the sight of the smoke rising where, from where the twin tires used to be. The funny part of the media made controversies until Trump recalled his experience in that day. These events were a commonly accepted fact by Jerseyans. Others in New Jersey have spoken about witnessing the, these events. Suddenly we're all being called liars in order for the Trump haters to cast aspersions on them. Why define anyone in the media to call me a liar in my face? Yeah, well, they'll do that. Just give it enough time. And was the Washington Post lying in an article on September 8th? 18, 2001, when I wrote the following, Mr. Kent, you better start using the powers of Clark Kent, not Omega Kent, because Clark Kent's a good reporter. He would ferret out the story. In Jersey City, within hours of two jetliners plowing in the World Trade Center, law enforcement authorities detained and questioned a number of people who were allegedly seen celebrating the attacks and holding tailgate-style parties on rooftops while they watched the devastation on the other side of the river. Now note the words detained and questioned. I know what I saw. Donald Trump knows what he saw and scores of New Jersey residents know what they saw. What none of us need is some talking head who doesn't live here or didn't see what we did to tell us what happened. I encourage anyone who witnessed the celebrations in New Jersey, New York, or any other city that day to share their story on Twitter with the hashtag number sign Trump is right. And then we have the comments on this story. Uh, Muslims around the world cheered, DebbieShilso.com, Palestinian Muslims on the street of Ramallah, Palestinian Sunni Muslims on the streets of Patterson, New Jersey, Shiite Muslims who were waiters and staff in a Middle Eastern restaurant in West Bloomfield, Michigan, Lebanese, Iraqi, and Iranian Shiite Muslims all over Dearbornistan, that's Dearborn, Michigan for those of you who don't call it that. And I noted the Pew Research Center note that at least the 30s American quote-unquote and name-only Muslims openly support Al-Qaeda and suicide bombings against Americans, which means they still celebrate. And there's a picture, Palestinian woman on Ramallah Street cheers 9-11 attacks. Alicia Stern, at Alicia Stern on Twitter. Debbie remembers two of the Muslims celebrating 9-11 on streets in New Jersey at Kim LaCapria, at Snopes, uh 22nd November 2015. AP, Art Part, at Art Part 7 on Twitter, John Cardillo, Jenny, at Jenny Lynn N, 
101, 101 at Chuck Arena. There was news footage of Muslims partying and cheering in Passaic and Patterson, New Jersey. Trump is white, 22 to November 2015. Pat at Pestle 5. At Brad K. Richardson, one proof Muslims celebrated they heard 9-11 attacks. Hundreds of young men laughing, dancing, cheering. I saw them. 22 November 2015. Time and out at Donald Trump at ABC. The blind sheik lived in New Jersey, and I saw it on TV, but in New York City, many Muslims were also cheering, and I saw it myself. 23 November 2015. Uh, what's it to you? Uh oh I just, uh, sorry about that. The Muslims, Governor Pataki at real Donald Trump at Steph George Stephanopoulos. The Muslims were celebrating till they realized the backlash soon to follow. I saw it. And then we have Connie at Girl Painting. I saw it too, Archery at Storm Force One. The day and age we live in doesn't change the fact that Muslims did, in fact, and let me go to that. Bear with me for a moment. Party after 9-11 in Jersey City. Love or hate Trump, it happened. Uh, and here's a positive thing about Trump. Women employees of Trump's company say he's the most pro, one of the most pro-women people in business or politics. So there's a comment. And here's a guy, he said he went for a job interview at Macy's. Oops, I just, uh, hold on. And I, I can't get that, so I just messed that one up. So that's one story out there. Then we have a story, and I'll ask you to bear with me a moment. I have to go into my email. We have the story of this story. Now, hardly a conservative news source. NBC News, A Chilling Tale. And I will put the links to all these on the description thing. And this story is not by NBC News, unless he worked for them back then. I don't know that. I have one of his books. It's quite good on FDR. But arch-liberal Jonathan Alter, Newsweek columnist, a Brooklyn boy predicted the World Trade Center attacks. What's a jittery New York to make of that? And this is published on 10-12-2001. This week, I went to Brooklyn in search of a, quote, urban myth. You see, the liberals always say this is an urban myth. It's made up. It's BS. About the World Trade Center assault. Was word of the attack on the street before September 11th? What I found out was chilling. This story is no myth. And he goes down and he says, On October 11th, Jeffrey Spott, Sapiro, an aggressive reporter for the New York Journal News of Westchester County, published an article that's in New York, that tracked the story to New Utrecht High School in Brooklyn, New York. Shapiro identified a teacher who witnessed a freshman in her class saying the week prior to the World Trade Center attacks, do you see those two buildings? They won't be standing there the next week. Now, I heard this discussion at the time around 9-11. I remember hearing it. But I also remember seeing stories and reports of Muslim children cheering in New York schools and saying the Jews did it. But you're not going to find that today, because that stuff's all disappeared. And I'm going to skip down here. Since, um, just a moment. On September 6th, five days before the attack, Antoinette Di Lorenzo teaches English in a second language to a class of Pakistani immigrants, led a class discussion about world events. She asked a freshman, his name has been withheld, what are you looking at? The youth was peering out the third floor window toward lower Manhattan. After he made the remark about the World Trade Center not being there next week, the teacher didn't immediately think of it, though it stuck in her mind. On September 11th, school was canceled after the attack, and again the following day. day on the 13th, Thursday, a clearly agitated Di Lorenzo saying she had been afraid to come forward reported the incident at the principal's office it scared the hell out of everyone, according to a source to the school. The police and FBI were alerted, and I remember seeing this story as well, folks. Twelve NYP op NYPD officers entered the school, secured the classroom for three hours, locking the doors with the students inside. 
While the students were brought lunch and a movie and told to be calm, the youth in question and his older brother, a sophomore, were taken to be interrogated by the FBI stationed at the police precinct nearby. Dee Lorenzo, the key to the believability of this story, was also questioned. She was described by school officials having superb and unblemished record in the New York school system. A police source described her as 100% credible. Moreover, according to police, you confirmed having made the September 6th statement about the towers. At the moment he did so, his older brother elbowed him, said he had been kidding, quote, end quote, ha, ha, ha. And the youth in question agreed. The younger brother seemed upset and said he was having a bad day. Yeah, no, no, no crap. Uh, you're in deep trouble, guys. When asked why, he said his father was supposed to come back from Pakistan that day. Further details in the interrogation on career in part because the FBI is not discussing it. It took the father a few days to return. After a week, uh, the father visited the school and asked why his son's been interrogated by the authorities. He was very angry about it. His family's constitutional rights have been violated. Having done nothing wrong beyond, beyond spreading a rumor that turned out to be true, the student returned to his classroom and remained in the school. The FBI placed his boy, the boy's family under surveillance, does not see a connection to the plot to blow up the tires. The case remains under investigation with thousands of leads that doesn't appear to go anywhere. So this happened. Okay. Then we have another story. And I'll read this one, Mr. Kent. Um, and this is from American... Um, thinker. And it's entitled Trump, American Muslims, the media, and 9-11. You know, give me a moment. I'm having problems with Firefox lately. It keeps resetting my connections. It's aggravating as hell. Um, Trump, American Muslims, and the mainstream media after 9-11. David Paul on November 29, 2015. Once again, it's Donald Trump versus the mainstream media with the focus this time being on the aftermath of 9-11. Trump is being portrayed by the media as a xenophobic buffoon for saying thousands of he had cheered on 9-11 statement more precisely. Media quote-unquote fact-checkers, which means BS artist to those in um, Oak Grove, including those who ignore their own publications' facts, rush to allege no evidence that thousands of Muslims across the Hudson River, New Jersey, had publicly cheered as opposed to privately cheered the 9-11 attack. Such an outrage was thinking television images from the Palestinian territories showing thousands of Muslims cheering 9-11 attacks. Yet Trump may be on to something. Just as significant Elements of truth were contained in Trump's badly worded comments about Mexico not sending its best, but in sending many of its criminal class. His comment about cheering Muslims contains elements of truth. The story has progressed through Trump pointing to Washington Post piece one week after 9-11. Northern New Jersey draws Prober's eyes. The one Mr. Kent seems to be, it thinks, invalid. And the Trade Center bombing connections to 9-11 hijackers. That's the 93 Trade Center bombing. Article briefly mentioned to report small gatherings of Muslims cheered as the Twin Towers burned and collapsed. Trump subsequently mocked a reporter wrote that story when the reporter said he couldn't remember details of what he wrote. Well, I'd mock him, too. You don't know what the hell you wrote. Uh, you're pretty bad. So, um, Trump denied making fun of the reporter's handicap. The media had a field day with that one. So... Days after 9-11, and this is hardly a conservative news source, veteran newsman Dan Rather spoke about small gatherings of cheering American Muslims when visiting the David Letterman Show, another arch-liberal. Asked by Letterman if Muslims were celebrating 9-11, <clears throat> excuse me, a teary-eyed and emotional Rather remark that it happened overseas, and yes, at home. Now, Dan Rather say this, CBS News anchorman. Oh, absolutely, quote, sorry about that. They're celebrating. There's one report that has not been confirmed, but there are several reliable reports. There was a cell, one of those cells across the Hudson River. They got on. This is a report. I emphasize, I don't know this for a fact. There's several witnesses who say this happened. They got on the roof of the building, look across. They knew it was going to happen. <clears throat> they were waiting for it to happen, 
And when it happened, they celebrated. They jumped for joy to see this happen. It was a great triumph. And in a sense, they're right. For the terrorists and the people who hate America, it was a great triumph. It's inconceivable to me and you, but David, this is what we have to understand as a country. We're not dealing with the kind of thing we dealt with in any war we ever fought before. Because we've never dealt with these kind of hateful to the core evil people, end quote. Now that's Dan Rather on David Letterman, two arch liberals, and one of them saying, even though it's uncorroborated, corroborative, the stories are out there. And I'm using one more thing. In retrospect, Rather's comments remarkable given he's a liberal, and yet at the time, he and other like-minded media figures, together with almost every Democratic lawmaker, had a moral clarity right after 9-11 that was subsequently subdecided. They fretted about a backlash against Muslims, which was almost non-existent. I'm putting in the words almost, because there was some backlash. And though Rather and others initially praised Bush's reaction to 9-11, they went on to embrace Bush derangement syndrome. Did CBS News ever follow up about reports of cheering Muslims in New Jersey and set the record straight? It appears CBS didn't. And neither did CBS, um, I'm jumping and, and partly quoting, nor the Washington Post ever followed up on specific reports of public cheering among small groups of Muslims. So that's story, another story. And then the last story here is from Debbie Stossel. And Debbie has an article, and give me a moment, Trump write on Muslim cheers for 9-11 but got the numbers wrong. Debbie Schloss, Schlissel, sorry, not Schlossel, I'm confusing uh, her with uh, the conservative Fox reporter. Um, that's S-C-H-L-U-S-S-E-L. -S -S and... As soon as it loads, I can read you this one. So give me a moment. Uh, I don't know why this is taking so long. But basically what she... Okay, here we go. Here it is. This is November 23rd, 2015. Looks like Donald Trump was exactly right about... The location, wrong about the number, which is irrelevant in my book. The Washington Post fact checker doesn't read his own paper or look at its database. That is not online. This is done off by reporters and editors of mainstream media, including a pan-Muslim Nolan Finley of the Detroit Newsian. From the September 18th, and I've already quoted that several times. I'm not going to quote that. Not thousand, but good enough to establish his point that there are plenty of Muslims on U.S. soil who cheer their fellow co-religious jihad and mass murder of Americans. Not news to any of us. More incidents of U.S. Muslims cheering detailed below. And she gives, here we go, uh, she gives stories. In, in fact, Muslims in America, at least three cities, cheered the 9-11 attacks in Patterson, New Jersey, Dearborn of Stan, Michigan, and West Bloomfield, Michigan. Students at a Dearborn of Stan school later wore sweatshirts they made glorifying the 9-11 attacks. And also in Dearborn of Stan, Muslim Ford Motor Company factory workers cheered and high-fived at the 9-11 attacks. And several years ago, MTV reported this happened. She doesn't have a copy of the story, and apparently nobody else does, and MTV won't comment on it. And those Ford workers were fired. So we have three American cities that they were cheering the killing of 3,000 Americans and the destruction of two of three office buildings and probably the Pentagon and probably four airliners. So in a, in a sense, not a literal sense, Trump is right. American Muslims were cheering 9-11. They were cheering for the bad guys, except to them, they weren't the bad guys. They were the good guys. So I'm sure that that's four different stories that I found looking on my iPad tonight. And if I can find four different news sources, four different sources on the web that says it happened, how many more are we going to find in weeks to come? So you anti-Trump people need to get your heads out of the ground or somewhere else 
and start going down to your library, the microfilm files, or if you have a library that actually has real live old newspapers, and go back to 2001 and start looking for the stories. And I'm sure somebody, because sooner or later it turns up, somebody will have a tape. Somebody have a videotape of the conspiracy, like Dark Skies here. Somebody will have a copy of it somewhere. Someone will have taped it. We'll find somebody who happened to tape it that day. And it's been in a closet for 17, 15, 14 years. Sorry, not 17. It'll turn up. Someone will release it because someone will have taped the, the stories because they thought it was there. They would tape it for posterity. It's going to surface sooner or later. All right. I know I'm right. I know Trump's right. And I believe Donald Trump. And you know what? I've talked to more people in the last month and not to a man. I haven't talked to any women. But every man I've talked to says they're voting for Trump if he becomes the Republican nominee. They're sick and tired of the BS from the Obama administration. They're sick and tired of professional politicians. And they think Donald Trump will negotiate and kick butt, and I do too. So if you don't like Donald Trump and you don't like my politics, well, I'm sorry. But Trump was right, and I'm saying it again. All right, have a great day. I'll be back later on today with more videos. Bye-bye.